So for me, this particular day helps me reflect on the things that we still need to focus on to help this girl, you know, achieve their dreams, you know, get to where they want to be in life and not be limited in, with their environment. Growing up, I saw so many girls who couldn't finish secondary school simply because of the environment or the community that we grew up in. And I'm sad to say this doesn't really um, give me so much proud, pride, but I was the first girl in my village to finish or complete secondary school. And I'm just talking about secondary school. And it shouldn't be like that. Same thing, when I went to university, it was kind of a celebration in the village. Like this is the first thing this is happening. But it shouldn't have started with me. So yes, I'm the first one and I should be proud, but at the same time, it makes, it, it makes me sad. But at the same time too, I look back and say, I think I have presented an example within my community. And I think that is what we also need to, to be looking at. Have we given the people or the, the girls in these communities the right examples to look up to? Are these examples inspiring enough for them to fight on despite the so many challenges? Because if you talk of challenges, I used to sit on the floor too in a classroom. But did that stop me from proceeding with education? No. I used to still go to school without taking breakfast. Did that stop me from completing school? No. So where can we still inspire the girl child that despite the challenges they are facing, despite not having sanitary facilities at the, at the school, they can still go on to you know, focus on their education, still work hard within that system, even though and we know that we should rectify the challenges. But where these challenges still stand, how do we motivate this girl child to continue to work hard and still meet their dreams? I think it means a lot. Um, it's a very broad, broad, broad subject. Um, but I think number one, uh, it, it kind of reminds me that in today's world, we really also need to get you know, the girl child in the digital space. Um, I, I think I have seen, or even growing up myself, certain things I'm catching up now. And it, it, I didn't have to wait up to now to catch up on, on things that maybe I should have learned 10 years ago. So for my children, they don't have to wait until that particular time. For me, it was late. I would want this to be earlier for them. I have two girls. And for me as a parent, I already know that I need to introduce them to the digital world because we're living in a global world. And therefore, my, my child who is learning here in Malawi has to compete for the same opportunities that a girl in the USA has to, um, is competing for. So how do I empower this child who is growing up you know, in, a, in a, a country considered to be poor? Should that be a limitation to their dreams? Should that be a cap on their dreams? And I think, no. So if, if we are talking about digitalization, especially in relation to the girl child, I think we already have to begin uh, to inculcate in them a culture to begin to see that this is a part of the today's world. I'm glad you asked that question because I think in the, in the communications sector in Malawi it's so evident, it's so evident. When you go through the ranks, it's clear when you talk about the, the digital divide. So when I was in the mainstream media, um, actually the time that I joined the mainstream media, we didn't have a single camera person, when, a single female camera person, for instance. Um, when we launched the TV station at Zodiac. At the same time, we didn't have even the one to edit, you know, audio, uh, the clips and so forth in the on the radio technical side. 
we didn't have a female technical person in the IT department at that particular time. Now, I'm glad that we have seen a bit more join. You can still, I mean, if you look at the balance, it's still not there. I would still want to see the kind of a 50-50, um, we're talking about the 50-50 campaign in politics, we're talking about the 50-50 in, you know, balance in, in other sec sectors. But I think in the communications sector, we really have not advanced this conversation. And partly it's because the gender divide is evident in other areas as well. But it's more prominent in the technical side. So we, we, we definitely, as leaders in the communications world, have to do better in, in terms of training more female people to get into the digital side of it. I think our mindset from way back has been that this is a man's world. So we will leave the, the journalists to be, we have more female reporters, but more male technical persons. When it gets to the leadership, you also have more male and the females are only concentrated on the lower positions. But I think we, we are moving in the right direction, but it has to start with us as women. Those that, of us who are in the, in the media field, we have to, to, one, aspire to be more. So let's train ourselves in the digital sector. Let's begin to practice more. Sometimes you can even teach yourself without even going into a formal school with the, within the environment that you're in. Take interest in what the men are doing and train yourself. We already have a few female uh, leaders within the sector, but maybe those of us who are in leadership positions have also to hold the hands of the female journalists, the female media persons, the female communications persons to learn and get into the space um, in the digital, digital space. Otherwise, I think if we don't inspire ourselves and if the female journalists, female media uh, persons, female communications persons don't aspire to be more than what they are today, it will be difficult for anyone else to push them to get into that space. But it begins with you as an individual. I think I will respond in relation to the sector I'm in as well. Um, but I'll also, as I said, I'm a mother of two. I will also just touch on how I'm inspiring my own girls. And I hope like more pa parents are doing more with their own children as well. So I think from um, the sector that I'm in, uh, number one, uh, from Misa Malawi, we have a training center now. So what we're doing is constantly run these training workshops and we make it a point that we have to have equal number of participants, females and males. And we think that little by little, we are getting you know, female journalists to see that you know, they can equally be the same as their male colleagues, whether it's in the newsroom, whether it's in the recording studio, editing room, and so forth. We have, for instance, um, training um, topics where we are specifically focusing on technology, how to use technology in, your, in the field that they're in, 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 in the journalism field, in the communication space they're in. And I think it's helping a lot because we are seeing even the creativity that is coming in after those trainings is quite encouraging. So I would say I think for MISA Malawi, the organization that I'm leading, we are more now into training individuals to learn more of the skills that maybe we didn't practice more when we were in college. But now that we are in the field, let's practice more and become more creative and give uh, citizens information that is you know well researched using the tech side because now if if you talk of data journalism for instance you can't talk of data journalism without technology so it's it's very critical now that we are also teaching um, uh, the technology side the tech side of journalism is very critical and and, and i was just uh, joking with someone um we we are introducing um we will have a course uh, on TikTok. 
and uh, I was like, you know, when I was uh, looking at TikTok at first, I was like, oh, this is so childish, you know. But now it's even in the journalism space. 